What does Lilith, as mentioned in Isaiah 64 as a night demon, considered by some as Adam's first wife, has to do with Diablo 4 game currently being endorsed and promoted by KFC? Now, the Diablo games have been around for a while, starting when they were released first in January 1997. And back then, people didn't really accept the game's openly satanic themes and stories. But things have really changed. Stuff that used to be strange and impossible like occult, Satanism, witchcraft, radical gender ideas have become mainstream and strongly influenced American culture today. These ideas are also so widely accepted in the USA that even the KFC feels very confident in teaming up with Blizzard to promote the real character of the Lilith demon, a creature mentioned as I already have said, Isaiah 34. As you can see, KFC website. This is not some kind of a demon website. This is a KFC fast food chain restaurant website. It has a promotion going on right now. My Diablo rewards. So if eating the junk food is not bad enough already, now you can have a little cherry on the top of the cake. You can be a part of the promotion campaign and get a little Lilith and as well as other characters that are technically or supposedly fighting the Lilith, which are demons themselves, as part of your package of eating at KFC. Now, the company that promotes and creates this Diablo 4 video game on their website talks about this game. It has a commercial, which I'm not going to play, but it has this text that pretty much summarizes what this game is about. Lilith has returned to sanctuary, summoned by a dark ritual after her lengthy exile. Before you begin to wonder, the five massive regions of Diablo 4, as a barbarian, druid, necromancer, rogue, or sorcerer to undo the agony Lilith exacted on the world she helped create. We urge you to reuse this launch guide and let it aid you in your triumph over evil. So pretty much this game Diablo 4 focuses on Lilith coming back because of some magic and ritual that was accomplished and now as a player you can become one of the five characters and you can customize them to help you fight this demon. Surprisingly, each one of these five characters that fights Lilith are demons themselves. The Barbarian is a strong warrior who fights up close with powerful weapons. The Druid is a nature-focused character who can transform into animals like bears and werewolves. The Necromancer, which the name should tell you what that is, it's a character who controls people who died. They raise skeletons, command them to fight, and use curses to weaken enemies. The Rogue is a fast and sneaky character who excels at ranged combat. And the sorcerer is a character who specializes in magic. What does the Bible teach us about these things? Well, first and foremost, I want to address the issue of Lilith. The Lilith has been this figure that has been debated on and talked about in mythologies and so many other things. Some people actually believe that Lilith is Adam's wife. It comes from Jewish mythology, where Lilith is seen as a supernatural figure associated with darkness, demons, and seduction. They claim she was the first wife of Adam before Eve, and she refused to submit to Adam, and therefore she went into rebellion. Their reference for that, and this actually comes from some Jewish scholars. Not everybody believes or accepts that in Jewish community, but still that idea is there. That in Genesis chapter 1, men and women were created on the same day from clay. But in Genesis chapter 2, it seems to show that God created a man and then He created a woman from a man. So some of these Jewish commentators in the Jewish Midrash, which Midrash is actually a Jewish body of like a commentary on the scripture. What they actually do to reconcile these two chapters of Genesis that seem to contradict themselves at first, they say that these are two separate events, rather two accounts of the same event, and they say that Adam's first wife Lilith rebelled and therefore God went and created the second wife for Adam. 
Now, the Talmud, which is a central Jewish text for Jewish law and tradition, doesn't say anything about Lilith being Adam's wife, but it does mention her four times. Babylon Talmud text refers to Lilith as a female demon who is associated with causing harm to newborn infants and pregnant women. But what does the Bible say about Lilith? Well, actually, there is a verse in the Bible Isaiah 34 verse 14, it says the following, The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the jackals, and the wild goat shall bleed to its companion, and the night creature shall rest there, and find for herself a place of rest. Some English translators use the term Lilith, while others translate with terms like owl, night creature, night bird, or night monsters. So what do we take away from this Lilith promotional thing with KFC? Well, first of all, I think that KFC is trying to ride what's happening in the culture and they see this as just a game. But at the same time, demonic agenda is behind that to desensitize our culture and to make it seem like these things, these demons, necromancy, sorcery, witchcraft, Lilith, they're just figures of speech representing evil and we're all at war with evil. They actually want to push this idea that you can fight evil with evil. My three takeaways. First one, Lilith is a demon. I do believe that not only because we've done deliverances and Lilith came out as a demon, but also we see this throughout the history and other deliverance ministers and we see this mentioned in the Bible. Lilith is an unclean spirit that seems to haunt people in dreams of the night and visions of the day. Lilith can appeal to men in the likeness of a woman and to women in the likeness of a man. Lilith seems to attack people in their sexual and reproductive realms of life. Lilith attacks children, childbearing, through miscarriage and sometimes causing people not to have children. Lilith seduces men to drain their essence. In fact, it was believed that when she sleeps with men, she steals their seed to impregnate herself to produce demonic offsprings. While I know that demons can't produce demons, one thing is certain, many people have experienced demonic intrusion in their sleep through sexual repeated dreams. And once they experience deliverance, those dreams stop. The second takeaway is spiritual warfare is not a game. Spiritual world is real. There is evil and good, Satan and God. Satan is a defeated foe. He is a created creature who rebelled against God and who opposes God's will, God's ministers and God's church. We are in a cosmic conflict battle between evil and good. Satan's will and God's will. Satan, demons and evil people will have their will and they are responsible for their will and what happens on this earth is not always consistent with God's character as revealed in Jesus. Jesus opposed disease, demons and disasters originating from the will of Satan, fallen angels, not from God. God has already won but we are called to wage spiritual warfare against evil through prayer, evangelism and deliverance. Church is a warship, not just a cruise ship for pleasure. We are soldiers, not slaves. We don't win this war by participating in a video game. We don't win this war by eating junk food from KFC. We win this war through prayer, through spiritual warfare, through evangelism and setting the captives free through deliverance. The third thing that I want you to keep in mind is that you can defeat demons like Lilith with other demons like necromancy. Demons are removed by the power of the Holy Spirit according to Matthew 12, 28. Demons are removed in the name of Jesus according to Mark 16, 17. And demons are removed by being cast out of people according to Matthew 8, 16, Matthew 9, 33, 10, 1, 10, 8, 12, 28, and so many other verses. Demons are not removed by spells. Demons are not removed by conjuring up some powers. Demons are not removed by physical weapons. And therefore, this idea that portrays spiritual warfare, I know it could be attractive to so many people, but I would encourage you to stay away from that. If you really want to fight demons, 
become a Christian, get filled with the Holy Spirit, live a holy life, embrace your authority as a believer and cast out demons. That is the real way of taking part in spiritual warfare. The Bible says we should not take part in the works of darkness. This may seem like a naive game, but I do believe it opens people to a demonic influence as well as desensitizes our culture toward things that are real, dangerous and mean harm to us as humans. The Bible calls them demons. If you're playing this game, stop playing it and join Jesus' mission. That's not a game, but real life of preaching the gospel, making disciples and casting out demons. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you found this to be encouraging, enlightening and educational. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this with other people. Until next time.